Um, this section, 10.7, is the last section we're going to cover um, before we take our Chapter 10 test. It's called Interpret the Discriminant. Uh, this is a pretty easy section, I think. It's uh, just a one-day lesson, and I should be able to cover this for you within the next uh, couple minutes, and you'll have a good understanding of what the discriminant is and what it represents. So I guess the first thing is, what, what does it mean to have, let me get this out of the way, what does it mean to have a discriminant, or what is that thing? Well, when you have the quadratic formula, the portion of the formula underneath the radical that is called the discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac, that part of the formula is known as the discriminant. So the next thing is, you know, what does that, what is it good for? What does that thing in there tell me? Well, it, it tells me one of three things, and I had someone actu actually ask something about this in class last week, and the question was, how, you know, why did I only get one answer when I use these numbers for, the, for some problem in our last homework assignment, why did I only get one answer? Well, it's for the following reason. Your discriminant, if it works out to something more than zero, then that means your quadratic has two solutions. And while I'm talking about this, you might want to look on the middle of page 678. So why don't you take your book, be on page 678, and in, in the middle of the page, you will see a little chart. And if the discriminant has two solutions, that means, or I'm sorry, if the discriminant's greater than zero, that means the quadratic has two solutions. That picture is shown on the far left of that table. And what that means is when, when the discriminant's greater than zero, it means your parabola is going to touch the x-axis in two places. Now, if the discriminant itself actually equals zero, that means when I plug in b and square it and I subtract 4ac, if that works out to exactly zero, then that means the quadratic only would have one solution. And that is shown in the diagram in the middle of that table on page 678. You notice the, the parabola is only intersecting the x-axis in one place. That's what is occurring when the discriminant equals zero. And then the final thing that could occur when you take b squared minus 4ac, if the discriminant is less than zero, that means the quadratic has no solutions. So if you were ever to plug an equation in the quadratic formula and you find that underneath your radical you get a negative amount, well, obviously we can't take square roots of negative. That gives us imaginary numbers. Well, that means that that particular quadratic would have no solutions. The picture for that is on the far right of that table on page 678. And you can see that would be the case where the parabola is never intersecting the x-axis. So what you're going to find then on today's assignment, the main bulk of the assignment is just for us to determine, does the quadratic have no solutions, one solution, or two solutions? Okay, so again, if the quadratic has no solutions, that means the parabola does not intersect the x-axis. Okay, and that would be one of these two cases. Um, if the discriminant is less than zero then, and the standard form equation has a value greater than zero, then the parabola opens up and it must be above the x-axis. That would be the left picture. Okay, so again, let's go back and read that slowly because I read that fast. Let's process what I just said. If the discriminant is less than zero, that means I know my parabola is not touching the x-axis. If the a value of the standard form equation is greater than zero, if it's positive, that means the parabola opened up. Well, if the parabola opened up and it doesn't touch the x-axis, the situation I just described must be this picture. Okay, so my discriminant was less than zero. I know the parabola could not touch the x-axis. If my a value is zero, then I know, I misspoke, if my a value is greater than zero, then I know that it must be this situation here where the parabola is opening up because a was greater than zero and my discriminant was less than zero. However, if the discriminant is less than zero, 
and the A value was negative, that means my parabola must open down, my A value is negative, that must be this picture. So based on my discriminant, that can tell me, that can tell me a couple things. It can, it can tell me is, do I have one solution, two solutions, or no solutions? If I have no solutions, using the discriminant and just looking at my standard form equation, I can tell if it's this particular picture or this particular picture. When you go to the assignment for today and you turn to page 681, okay, you're going to notice that the questions for today are not asking us what's the solutions, like in numbers 3 to 17, it's asking us tell whether the equation has two solutions, one solution, or no solution. Or in 22 to 30, they're not, they're not asking us what is the solution. They're just saying find the number of x-intercepts. So remember, the x-intercepts would be how many places does the quadratic or the parabola touch the x-axis. So again, in 22 to 30, they're not asking us to find the solutions. They're asking us to tell how many solutions there would be. Okay? And then in 34 to 39, that's what I just referred to up here with what I just talked about. Oops, didn't want to do that. That's what I just talked about here in this paragraph. Let me get rid of that little mess there. Okay, and in 34 to 39, all they're asking is, based on your discriminant and based on your equation, tell me, is this graph above the x-axis or below the x-axis? And that's about it for this lesson.